Hello, Dan Housen here. Dan Housen here to let you know that you are watching Dre41 Gaming. They do video games of some sort. Who knows? Dan Housen doesn't. But they are very nice, very evil. Do time. And if you do not watch this channel, you shall rue the day. What's up, y'all? It is your boy, Dre41, a.k.a. Mr. 4K, a.k.a. El Fuego, Spicy Dre. And welcome to a, I guess, a solo episode of the Let's Talk podcast. Mainly the reason why it's a solo episode is because I wanted to talk to you guys about some upcoming videos um, that I'm going to have for you every Friday, I think. I'm assuming every Friday, unless I change my mind. And if so, then I, I don't know what to tell you. But basically... Uh, what I wanted to get into is just, as you guys see also on the screen as well, is gameplay footage of a Token Red Suit and 4 for the Dreamcast. Now, the one thing that I wanted to do um, on this video was just explain to you what you're going to see within the next couple of weeks, maybe even a couple of months in regards to the Japanese wrestling games on this channel. Um, for Christmas, I was able to get a Dreamcast with a bunch of Japanese wrestling games, the Token Red Suden series, the Giant Graham series. I have a couple of Token Red, I have a Token Red Suden on my N64, and I also have a Token Red Suden on my PlayStation. Well, I have two, but the first one is the first Token Red Suden, but it's Power Move Pro Wrestling, which is just like an American skin over the Token Red Suden game or New Japan game. But let me stick to what I'm going to talk about on this episode was like my overall like initial thoughts. I might do an overall review of the game, mainly because you can't find a really in-depth one, mainly because most people aren't going to really go into it and try to go navigate through the screens and, and, and go through this and go through that. But that's what I really want to do with this game, because mainly because the Token Red Student series is um, a pre predecessor words uh, to the smackdown series and it was made by you so I, I definitely want to get into that game I, I wish i had these games when i was younger but you know it, it is what it is but yeah so my initial thoughts with this game is number one i love the presentation the presentation japanese wrestling games always have some great like sports kind of presentations to them and i always appreciated those um another thing with this game is, is it's simplistic all right so New Japan games are basic, right? You're not going to find um, all the matches that you might find in a WWE game or any other wrestling game because they don't really do too much of the gimmick matches, hardcore matches, deathmatch, anything like that. So you're not really going to find it. Multi-man matches, six ways, eight ways, ladder matches. They don't do that in Japan, right? You, you get what you, you know, bare bones, really strong style, fighting spirit kind of pro wrestling game. And this is what Token Red Suit 4 is. Now the controls, controls are, are easy, but strange. It's like the X button on the Dreamcast controller. You can run, you can pick up your opponent and you can Irish whip them with the same button. And you get in and out the ring the same way. So it's really strange how they set it up, but I, it works for the most part unless you're getting like your know, ass whooped and you're really frantic and you're trying to like do different things then it might mess you up a little bit now with this game it you know how like in fire pro where you have to start off with the smaller moves and then work your way up to the bigger moves to inflict more damage this game almost has the same gameplay mechanic but the difference is you don't have to choose the, the weaker moves. The game automatically makes you use those. So as you uh, deal out more damage to your opponent, then your moveset opens up to now, okay, now you get to use these sets of moves because of the way their groggy stance is. And they got three different groggy uh, stances. They got a, a small, medium, and large. And a large groggy is like when they're like dazed and confused and they're like rolling around like, you know what I'm saying? Like a fatal, like a prelude to a fatality in Mortal Kombat. So those, that's how you open up the moves. And each, I, I guess, each, uh, how, how I want to put it. So when it's like on small dizziness, I guess, or grogginess, you get two moves. Medium grogginess, another two moves. And large grogginess, you get another two moves. Um, 
and it's really in depth. And I, I want to say the reason why I was able to find that out is because I went through call mode. But I'll, I'll get to call mode in a second. Let's we, let's not worry about that. I want to talk about the gameplay. Ga gameplay wise, it's it's pretty good. Um, I got it on easy right now. Um, the gameplay that you're watching is is computer. It's not me actually playing on. I played one match. You probably already seen it, the two hour video where I go through call mode, which I will get to. Um, but in regards to the the, the gameplay, um, it, it's on easy right now. I, I'm gonna put it on medium and see how I do. Um, reversaling is basically you got to figure out what button um, to press, and it's like a rock paper scissors kind of deal where you punch, grapple, submissions, and it's like one takes over the other over the other i'm still figuring that one out um but gameplay wise is pretty good sometimes you get into situations um where you know you're beating your opponent and your opponent gets a spirit boost and that's all in all japanese wrestling games mostly um so I, that doesn't surprise me it's just the way it pops up so quickly it's like whoa okay like hold on one easy a match takes like five minutes to beat your opponent so that's okay, but then when they keep getting a spirit boost three times within that five minutes, it's like, oh my goodness, okay, I get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, chill out. Like, stop giving them so much spirit boost. Because, like, you can't pin them, and they're going to reverse a lot of your moves. They won't stay groggy very long. Um, hit detection sometimes is a miss, um, especially with running attacks and also grapples. Grapples, they almost have those T-Rex sort of arms where they just don't reach, and some of the attacks um, are the same way. Um, the hitbox, you got to be pretty damn close. And same thing with grapples, too. you got to be pretty damn close. Um, roster. Roster-wise, I appreciate the roster for what it is. Um, I I know with Japanese wrestling games, if it's not King of Coliseum or it's not Fire Pro, you're not getting a large roster. I get it. I'm cool with that. I am okay with that. Um, basically, with this one, you probably get, what, maybe... 20 something maybe 30 maybe 30 with eight call slots um and, and it's, it, it definitely showcases who were the top guys at the time uh within new japan pro wrestling and to be completely honest the best wrestlers to use are either the juniors or the nwo basically that's to me personally because you got keji in there you got the great muda in there um uh yeah i mean the best roster you know they got chono in there um they don't got a lot of american here's the thing in the preview video i mean like the, the video the intro video for the game they have more end up world members like the fake sting but he's not in the game technically technically but it's like you don't have a lot of american wrestlers like they got don fry in there which is okay i think that's it Don Fry is the only guy, like, and he's on the freelance team. You know what I'm saying? Um, they also got um, a, a Sushi Onita, which is cool. You know, they got an FMW guy in there. And I think this is when he went to New Japan. Um, I think this is when he retired from FMW and went to New Japan and it didn't work out. And then he went back to FMW. Sushi Onita is a, a dirty politician, but shout out to him. Uh, great wrestler. Um... <laughs> But yeah, the roster overall is pretty cool. Um, I appreciate it for what it is. And and honestly, if if the look of the game is dictated on how large the roster size is, Token Red Suda 4 did a great job in maximizing the looks of the wrestlers because they look pretty damn good for a game that came out 20 plus years ago. So shouts to, to you, they definitely did their thing on this one. Which is strange. I don't understand how they did so great in all these wrestling games up until AEW. I don't understand it. I, I, I felt like they were like the, the Michael Jordans of wrestling games until the AEW, whatever, it's fine. Um, so overall with the looks of the game, I really like it. Um, you get to choose different arenas. When you choose different arenas, it tell you how many people are in it, which it really doesn't matter to me. I wish they had more mats to choose from mat designs i wish that was a thing but because it was a licensed new japan game i understand why they didn't you know what i'm saying i, I get it um for some reason they got women in this that are referees 
but you can only use them as referees when you're playing two players. I don't understand that. That's very, that's very strange. Other than that, the default referee is Tiger Atori. I think that's how you say his name. If not, I'm, I'm, I apologize. I think it is Tiger Atori. Whatever, it's fine. Um, let me get into the big thing. The one thing that I was deeply impressed with, and to be completely honest, I wasn't really aware of of how um, complex it was because I never really seen nobody on YouTube ever post any videos of call mode. Now you've seen my video. That video lasted two hours. I'm sorry, <laughs> but I, hey, listen, I just I wanted to show it. You know what I'm saying? Everything, all the screens. Now. I want to say the looks of the wrestlers is really basic and it's really basic if you're creating an actual wrestler now in this game because they don't have rights to some of them um you know they have wrestlers that have a look like you see me make mitsuharu masawa they had a, a face that kind of looked like masawa and they had an attire that kind of you know replicated what he wore so I was just like, oh, I'm on this. You know what I'm saying? I'm 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 making Masawa for my first call. Um, they also have like Hayabusa, Jensei Shinzeki, um, Stan Hansen, a Vader-esque kind of look, which the the big body models for the calls never look right in wrestling games. I don't know why. It's just they always do them wrong. They always do them like as if they're people who don't wrestle. Almost like an Abdullah the Butcher kind of body. I think, but um, but uh, overall, it's it's a good call mode, not the best, in regards to who you want to create, not the best. Like you can create like Tiger Masks, Hulk Hogan, um, you can create like like you can do a Bret Hart attire, but they don't have a head to use for Bret Hart, which is strange. Like they have this full attire, that like you could do a Stone Cold, you could do like a Rock, an Undertaker, but they don't have like all the tattoos. You could do like a Kenshin Liger, but they don't have the full attire to do that, I don't think. Um, like di different wrestlers, basically. And, and the way they set up like the trunks to the shorts, to the long tights, to the pants, to like the Sabu kind of pants is weird the way they set it up. But it takes some getting used to, but it, it's it's OK. It's OK. It's not great, but it's OK. Um, another thing with the, the call mode is um, heights sometimes heights don't work yeah like something like i made vader like vader's like six two right and he's like around the same size as like masawa and a uh, kentako bashi but the problem is is like he looks super small and i'm like using the bigger body shape so i don't know if that's the reason why i don't know it's very strange but nonetheless it is what it is um another thing with that is like the names the ring names um i mean it's not in english so who cares but i mean it's like they don't have anything that like and i did the the um, translation so they don't really have stuff to match with like the action the actual created wrestler so it's like if i wanted to make hayabusa they don't have something that says like phoenix something or you know what i'm saying like something like that so that kind of bugs me out a little bit that they don't really have names to match like vader they could do like big van or or woolly mammoth or i don't know something like that like when i was going through the guide it um you know it just didn't really show the translation guide what i mean it didn't really show too much and in regards to like good names and i was using my phone too like pointing that screen so it was just like honestly i didn't know what the hell i was doing like it was just like the names aren't great the music choices are cool. They got eight different music choices. Some of them match up. You can tell like whose theme song they're supposed to be. Like Masawa's, you can clearly tell like like one of those is like his sort of theme song, which is cool. I appreciate it. The big thing about this game is the move sets. Oh my goodness! If I have to, if I have to like rank this in regards to like wrestling games that I've done like move sets in this has to be like top five I feel like this yo you can choose what type of pins you do. you can choose but hold on I'm, I'm gonna repeat this again you can choose what type of pins you do 
Now, even though I kind of like skipped that after I made a couple of calls in this game, it's still cool to have that option of like, if either you hook the leg or you put both hands on his chest and like press down on him when you pin him or, or just a lackadaisical kind of pin. That's that's a great option to have. Um, you can also select how you want to stop pins. Like, do you want to kick the opponent in the head? Do you want to kick at their legs? Do you want to throw an elbow drop? Like, you can choose how you want to break up pins. That's why. Also, with stomps, based on which part of the body, like if you're at the feet, you do a different type of attack. You can do a stomp. On the side of the body, you can do an elbow drop. At the head, you can do a double axe handle. I know we had these options in past wrestling games, but it goes to show that these past wrestling games, even from 20 years ago, had great options when it comes to making movesets that we really don't see nowadays in wrestling games. Like, and it's really strange um, that that's something that's missing. Um, another thing is finishers, you get three. But the thing about it is, is the three moves are moves you already previously set up in your move set. So, for example, they don't have a designated button for a finisher, right? It's a critical, but you choose which moves in your move list is a critical. You choose three of them. Um, so basically, it's like, for an example, Hayabusa, right? He does the Falcon Arrow. I have to make that one of his strong grapples, and then later down in the move set, I have to make it one of his critical moves. So that's one of the moves he can use to finish off his opponents. Get what I'm saying? But that's how they also do in other Japanese wrestling games. I think they do that in the Pro Wrestling series. Yeah, they do that in that game too, which I'm also playing on my channel. Definitely watch that one too, Wednesdays. Um, and uh, yeah, so like with the move sets, and it takes a while to go through them. It really does. But the easy part about it is, is if you press, I'm looking at the controller. If you press the yellow button X, they show you a full preview of the move. So you get to see the move, like how it looks. And that's really good. I like that. Like that's a great feature to have. Um, so you get to see every single thing they're doing and and create an entrance. It's almost like current day wrestling games where you choose like the entryway, the ramp, getting into the ring, what they're doing in the ring. That's pretty cool. It's simplistic. It's not like as deep as many options. Mind you, this is on Dreamcast. So, you know, cut it some slack. Um, so it, it does have a lot of options for that, which I like, you know, you do your taunts. Um, another cool thing that takes way too long is like double team moves. Like my goodness, the amount of like double team options is ridiculous in this game. Um, but overall, the movesets are good. Um, the ground grapples. The one thing that they are missing out on surprisingly is like, like turnbuckle moves, like when they're in a the corner. I mean, I'm talking to like, like, there's not that many options and high flying options too, which is strange because they had the junior division in there. So I'm not sure why it's just not that deep as far as like high flying moves. But like if you wanted to create like an MMA fighter in this game, you can do that. Um, you can make them like a semi luchador. Um, you can do like an American style. You can do strong style. And another thing, like when I'm doing the move set, like Masawa, like. You know how he does like the tiger driver, tiger suplex, Emerald Flosion. Emerald Flosion is not in this game. So certain wrestlers have a decent amount of their moves, but they're missing some like Hayabusa, for example. You know, he does the Phoenix Flash, um, the Falcon Arrow. He also does the Uranagi. Uranagi is not in this game. I don't understand it. They got like moves from the Aki games where you do like the multiple power bombs into a death valley driver or multiple power bombs into another move like a samoan drop like they they get really funky with the moves like you could blow fire in a person's face in this game like they have that option they have the poison mists from different angles and directions in this game um they got the jensei senzaki like how he does like the praying power bomb walking the ropes the old school you know old school uh walking the ropes with the the chop to the throat or the back of the head or whatever um, they have a lot of the moves, like the Vader, like the Vader punches, uh, the Vader body attack. They got that. Um, they have a lot of moves in this game, but it's like you only give us eight slots. This came out on the Dreamcast in, what, late 90s, early 2000s. I'm talking about the game. And you mean to tell me we only get eight slots? Eight? Seriously? 
with all these moves I can do and the people I can create in this game, you're giving me eight. I, I don't like that. I don't like that. But it, it's fine. It is what it is. Um, but, yeah, with the call mode itself, man, the moves that they have in there are pretty good. Um, like I said, some of them are just, man, those power bomb ones are amazing. Uh, the DDTs they have in the game, they got the Dangerous DDT. I love that move. The Dangerous DDT is amazing. Oh, man. I don't know why I just like that move. I don't know why 2K took it out their games, but whatever. It, is. it hasn't been in their game for years, actually. I don't think it's been in there since the SmackDown games on the PlayStation 2, to be completely honest. I don't think it's been in there since then. Um, but yeah, it's it's a lot of moves in here that you see in, in current, well, shooting the AEW game and in the uh, 2K games. So um, you get to see that Ux has a, uh, they have skin in the game when it comes to wrestling games. I mean, you can see their animations clearly. You know what I'm saying? Like you look at this game, and you're like, wow, they're still using the Jawbreaker from 20 plus years ago. Wow. And, you know, it, it's fine. It is what it is. I'm not tripping about it. Um, overall, this game is great. Great game. Um, I'm going to be doing playthroughs of it um, for the next couple of weeks. Maybe even not next couple of weeks. A couple of months, to be completely honest. I'm going to do playthroughs. I'm going to have commentary over it because that's another issue that you don't see currently on YouTube where people are doing commentary over these videos, like explaining what they're doing, um, you know, giving details about, you know, the gameplay, things of that nature. Um, so that's something that I want to do. You know what I'm saying? Especially with this game. Um, I also have um, a giant gram. Uh, uh, so I have those, uh, the Giant Graham series. So yeah, listen, I'm going to say this. If you're a fan of wrestling games, and I get it like you like your 2K games, you know what I'm saying? Like you might play the AEW game or whatever. Definitely subscribe to this channel. I'm going to have wrestling games oh, for, the, shoot, for the foreseeable future. Um, but um, right now I'm going to be focusing on the Japanese wrestling games. And I'm really going to make sure that people get a full understanding, full, like, because sometimes I, I look through YouTube and I'm like, oh, man, like, I really like this. And this is before I got my Dreamcast. It was like, yo, I really want to see, like, gameplay videos or explanations of, like, the Token Red Suda series. But it's like, no one's doing it. Nobody. So it was like, yo, like, why is nobody doing this? It's like, but you always see, like, these 2K games and this. And it's like, I've done my recordings of 2k games and it's just like unless you're doing mods for them honestly it's just like you know you're making calls or whatever it's just like all right you know what i'm saying like let's move to something that's not really spoken about a lot and i think that this is really interesting and intriguing to have on my channel because it really opens it up to like even like people in japan who watch wrestling games on youtube or whatever they want to see like what we think about the wrestling games and things like that so I think it's cool to like have something like that on the channel. Um, so yeah, you can definitely expect more um, token red suiting games. Like I said, I got token red suit in one technically, which is um, Power Move Pro Wrestling. I got token red suit in two, which is on my N64. I got token red suit in three, which is on my PlayStation One, and I got token red suit in four, which is on my Dreamcast. So I have the whole series, and I, like I said, I, I'm looking at the games, and I also got like I said the giant Graham joints. I got the um, Wrestle Kingdom 1 and 2. I got King of Coliseum Red and Green. I got King of Coliseum 2. Um, I got All-Star Pro Wrestling 3. So I got a, a ton of Japanese wrestling games that I have. Of, now, here's the thing. The King of Coliseum series, I, the controls I just can't get. I don't understand it. I can't get it. I, the timing thing, I, I need to be like handheld and walked through that process. But the All-Star Pro Wrestling one, I kind of get. It's weird, the controls. It's how they have it set up. Like, shout out to Square Enix for jumping, you know, out the box. Jumping out the window and making wrestling games. Shout out to them. But it was just like, the controls are very weird. And it was like a hybrid between Fire Pro and, like, regular smackdown games and it's weird and it's slow but the presentation is great presentation is amazing I, like i said japanese wrestling games got presentation kind of down packed so it is what it is 
Um, but yeah, I mean, like I said, this video went kind of a little, little bit longer than uh, what I expected. But definitely subscribe, like, uh, like the videos, share the videos, so people will get to see uh, more of the Token Red Suden series, which predates the SmackDown games. Which I think, you know, in regard, if you're a WWE games fan and you like the wrestling games, I know I don't want to sound like no old head or nothing, but it's like, yo, definitely check out what got them to that point or the developers, the original developers, youths to the point to where they're proclaimed as the best game, a wrestling game developer out there. Besides the AEW game, I get it. Like, we're not going to talk about that in this video, but yes, definitely check out um, my gameplay walkthrough series of a token red student for only on Dre 41 gaming YouTube channel. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Other than that, y'all stay safe. Catch y'all in the next video. Later.